Uh, where business credit cards report. Now, before I give the next slide, Rad, because usually when this happens, there is an explosion in the room. And by explosion, I mean, I had those cards and they've never reported there. I get it. I have some of these cards too, and they don't report there either. I'm just going off of the majority data points that I've been able to capture from the bankers that I've been able to speak to, from some of the clients that I've kind of been able to survey, from some of the forums that I've been in. So I'm giving you just raw data points of the majority, right? Sometimes the majority is not the end all rule, but in this case, I'm going to sway toward the majority of where these cards are going to report based off of the surveys and, and the data that I've been able to capture. So with that said, here we go. Uh, issuer, American Express, Small Business Financial Exchange is where they typically report. From there, it funnels over into mm. Dun & Bradstreet. Sometimes it indirectly reports over to Dun & Bradstreet. But if you notice, I don't have Dun & Bradstreet on here because remember what I said earlier on in the call. Dun & Bradstreet is vendor accounts. These are financial accounts, which is why it's Experian, Equifax, Small Business Financial Exchange as a furnishing company, not as a not as a bureau. Again, clear distinction there. Remember, they're a trade association. Bank of America, Small Business Financial Exchange, where the data furnishes, and then from there, it flows. Capital One, Experian, and um, yeah, Capital One, Experian, Small Business Financial Exchange, Chase, across the board. And again, you guys open for discussion, by the way. Let me know in the chats if you have any. And by the way, these are business cards. These are for the business side. So if you guys have business credit cards already with any of these companies, let me know in the chat because we can continue to add to the survey, right? And continue to rack up some data points. Let me know, hey, well, I have a Capital One and it actually did report over to my Experian business, not personal, over to my Experian business. I actually did see that report. Chase, it's going to be Experian, Equifax, Small Business Financial Exchange. City, uh, Experian, Equifax, Small uh, SBFE. Discover, it's Experian and Equifax. PNC, it is Experian, Small Business Financial Exchange. And then Wells Fargo, Experian and Small Business Financial Exchange. Remember, this is for the business side, not for the personal side. So as you're kind of running through these, but I wanted to take it one step further. Uh, business credit cards that do not report to your personal credit. And then I also have some of them on there that do screenshot time. Check this out. So card issuer on the left reports all info to personal credit report. That's the first column. Reports only negative info to personal credit report. Middle column. Let me move my mouse. Reports activity to business credit bureaus. That's this column right here. Amex seems to be the more popular one. So reports all info to personal credit report. We know that that's not true. We know that, that, that they report typically once you've been late for 60 days. Some people say, hey, it's usually 120. They've been getting a lot more aggressive right around that 60 day mark. If you just haven't been paying your payments on time, that's when that PG starts to bite you in the butt because now they report that late payment over to your personal, not just over to your business. Uh, reports only negative info. Yes. So they only report negative information over to both sides, not just to your business. At that point, they report over to your both sides. Reports activity to the business credit bureaus. Yes. I want to talk about one, though, that a lot of us are familiar with, and that is with Barclays. Some of them uh, with, with, with their Barclays card, right? Reports all info, both to personal and to business. Similar to Discover, it is going to be the same thing, right? Do they report only negative information? No. Discover, do they only report negative information? No, because remember, they report all information. This is why I'm breaking down some of the more popular choices that we have here. And then reports activity to business credit bureaus. Yes. So for the most part, everyone that I have on here is a yes. So again, I think that this is a good moment for you guys to kind of screenshot and see, okay, are they reporting all of my information? If it's a no, okay, good. I'm in the clear. That means it's only on my business side. If if it's a yes, then take heed. That means they're reporting over to your personal side and over to the business side, which again, Capital One, a lot of us know, especially if you've been around some of our programs, we talk about them a lot, the Capital One Spark. They're reporting over to the personal and they are reporting over to the business as well, which is why I usually say, even though it's an easy slam dunk for you to, to usually get approved for Capital One, I'd stay away from it because it just defeats the purpose of you separating the personal from the business in terms of the um, in terms of the utilization of how you can run it, right? So why and how would you self-report? And by self-report, I'm talking about the, remember what we mentioned earlier, 
the self-reporting of trade lines or trade references that maybe aren't being reported over on your business credit profiles. Because sometimes you'll make a payment, you'll make two payments, and you'll say, man, this sucks. Nothing's reporting. I followed everything to the Q or everything to the T. Nothing's reporting over on my side, right? Now, this is directly from Experian, uh, uh, Experian Business, where they have 500,000 suppliers extending credits, but only about 10,000 of them are actually reporting it. That's directly from Experian Business. Now, with self-reporting, I want to be very clear with this. You can only self-report your trade references, not with uh, Experian, not with Equifax. You can only do it with Dun & Bradstreet. So if you're wondering, why would I want to have a trade reference? What is a trade reference versus a trade experience? Here's the difference. Again, nice screenshot moment. Trade reference is a business that gives commercial payment information to Dun & Bradstreet, a payment experience, or trade experience is a record of the payments Dun & Bradstreet receives from the trade reference. Trade experiences can carry more weight. Uh, trade experiences can carry more weight since they report directly from the credit issuer. I don't know about you guys, but I'd like to have a little bit more English on that. So let me break that down uh, a little bit more, even, even more so, right? Trade experiences means I purchased something, let's say $100 worth of computer paper and ink with Uline. Uline then saw that I paid my net 30 within 25 days. So that means that I was right on time with five days to spare. They then said, okay, cool. Irvin Friends LLC made that payment on time. Let's report that on-time payments over to Dun & Bradstreet. Congratulations. I've just received a trade experience. That trade experience is, or that payment experience or trade experience is now going to count as a, like, like a little bar to help cushion up my, uh, my credit report a little bit more, which means I'm now starting to build up on time payment history because it came directly from the vendor in this case. However, if I am going with trade references, that means that me self-reporting or the company that's, let's say, reporting, they're just saying that, yes, they've been here. Yes, they have bought with us, but there's no actual transaction record being filed through the database. I hope that we caught that because mm. I see so many people buying trade references for hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, and it is not having the same impact than it would if you had your own trade experiences. I'm going to call out one of the biggest companies that does this. Do it. And I call, call them, them all out, out bro. Call I them can, out. Call them out. Call them out. I, I, I can call them out because I make my own money. So I don't, I don't take affiliates. I don't take sponsorships anywhere on my podcast, anywhere on my platform. I make my own money off of everything that I do. And so because, and, they, and they're constantly reaching out to work with me, right? Again, use them for what they are. Use them for what they do. Do not let them sell you these trade references. I'm referring to Dun & Bradstreet. Yes, I'm calling out the big boys. Dun & Bradstreet will, will pretty much have you on these sales calls wanting you to pay thousands of dollars for trade references. That's almost subscription style that the minute that you stop paying for it, they rip them off like a Band-Aid. And now it plummets your Dun & Bradstreet score. And now you're left wondering what the heck is going on. And it's because of that. You don't have real trade experiences. That's not an actual trade line. That's a trade reference. It's a big difference. Now, again, is there a time and a place for trade references? Yes. So if you are, let's say you've been making payments on time to, let's say, a smaller mom and pop shop, and they're just not at the level that they're reporting over to Dun & Bradstreet or over to Experian or over to Equifax, right? Again, you can't do it with Experian and Equifax, but you can do it with Dun & Bradstreet. This is the information that you're going to want to have. I promise you, Rad, no one's ever broken this down the way that this is broken down here, bro. Let's go, these bro. Are, these are trade references right here that you can add. Again, is it as good as a trade experience? No, because it's not coming directly from the company of the actual invoice being cleared. But this is going to be kind of like, kind of like uh, in work where, hey, there's a reference. So Rad is looking for a job as an example. So he puts me on the application. He has me as a reference. Hey, I want to school with this guy. Uh, you know, we did some, um, you know, we did some charity work together. I'm a reference for him. But that reference can only go so far versus the previous employer that actually recommends him. That's the switch. And that's mm -hmm. the correlation that I want you guys to get. That's why a reference is still good, but a payment experience is above it. 
But at worst case scenario, you still want your references because you still want to get some type of, of credit reporting on there, even though it's not going to move the needle as much. Current or another way to look at it, or another yeah, way to look at it is on your W-2, you have to list the W-2 jobs that you had, right? So yes. it's like that's your actual trade line. And just another mm -hmm. example would be your reference would be people that you worked with as well. So just like what he said, as far as reference from a job employer versus him, like it's even even broken down even more so in the sense of your trade line is actually what's legally there, right? Your yes. reference is what is boom. It's a side. They're both important. They're both necessary, but there's a massive distinction. You're going to keep going over this slide, but can you also, when you're done with the slide, touch mm -hmm. on people that are selling you know, auto trade lines for their businesses and mortgage trade lines for your business. Is this thing a fluff? Is it real? Is it a fraud? If you could speak on that too, you might even have a slide in this deck, but I'm sure people in Facebook communities, because they get hustled in these things, mm -hmm. right? People are trying to sell trade lines or trade references uh, to them to build out their business credit. Is this real? Is this fake? If you could speak on that after this, that'd be super helpful. I, I'm I sure you. for other people. Yeah, no, I got you. I got you. So, so with this right here, uh, trade references, the information you want to have. And by the way, let me give you a real life scenario. Again, let's say you go to mom and pop shop. You've been buying from some time. They're a legit company, but again, they're maybe just not savvy with actually getting it reported. You can have this and submit it yourself directly with Dun & Bradstreet, right? Just make sure that the information matches whatever they have over on their side with the mom and pop shop. But uh, current amount owed. So if you have like a total of like a recurring balance, maybe a thousand bucks, 2,500 bucks, whatever that amount is, the manner of the payment, this is going to be ACH credit cash, uh, rolling 12 month high credit. This is the highest amount of credit that you've used over the last 12 months reporting dates or as of dates, kind of like the same thing, right? This is the reporting date, the date that let's say if I were to make the payment on the 30th, then the technically reports, let's say on the 12th, similar to how it would over on the personal credit side. And if you have no idea like how to figure this out, just pull up the invoice, or I usually recommend just stop into the shop or the mom and pop shop where you're at shopping at, and then just ask them to, to pull that up for you if you're not keeping record of it, which is important that you should. Current total uh, past due, selling terms, and then date of last sale. Now, when it comes to purchasing uh, trade lines, and I, and I kind of group this up into uh, whether it's auto trade lines, mortgage trade lines, uh, and I and I see them right. They're like three, four, five, six grand, and then they they report uh fifty k, hundred k, one twenty five, two hundred k um trade trade line over on your your business credit report. I'm very watchful of that because a lot a lot of these uh a lot of these databases are getting privy to it where they're seeing that that's not how do I say this? Remember what we mentioned earlier about all these? They all have a common thread about all these credit bureaus. And the common thread there is that you are being kind of scored and judged or your business based off of how much credit is being lended out to. And so if there's a huge discrepancy of how come there's a $250,000 line on here and there's nothing else supporting it. And so typically we would, and I say we, I'm talking about the business credit bureau. Typically we would have a credit recommendation of 5k, 10k. So how is there a 250k how is there a $350K thousand dollar line reporting on there? And so I'm going to group this up, Rad, into the bunch of um whenever people buy shelf corps, right? Okay. I think that it's such a it's such a gray area. And because it's such a gray area, I think that there is a right way of doing it, but I've seen more wrong, which is why I usually steer away from it. Okay. On on buying the trade lines. I've personally never dealt with a client that had it done the right way. So, I mean, that should say a lot. I've never dealt with a client that had it done the right way. Maybe I've been coming across a bunch of idiots that don't know what they're doing, right? Maybe I'm the idiot that doesn't know what he's talking about right now because I, I put myself in that group. But based off of everything that I've gathered, I've never seen that shortcut work out for someone in the long term. Wow, that's good, bro. Thanks for dropping that. I've never seen that shortcut work out for someone in the long term. And so updating and cleaning your business credit um, info. I'm gonna give you guys a framework. Let me know in the chats if you guys are ready for it. You got how you guys liking it, man? Irv is pacing himself. We're going marathon. He's the sprinter. I'm the marathon. He knows when he comes in these calls, we go a long time. All right. I got. I got. I got. I got to. You know. I got. I got to hype it up a little bit. I got to get my voice back. Yeah. They, they love you, bro. They love you, bro. 
they had no clue. They, I love it. I love when people say, "What's in your mentorship?" I'm like, I don't know. Just join. Step out on faith. Let's see what you do. Let's see how much you trust me. <laughs> right? I love that. I love that. And he said, he said, I, I sent you a copy of this, and I was like, "Yo, check it out. Let me know if you want me to remove anything." He said, "Dude, I trust you." I yeah. Trust you. So I mean, yeah. that means a lot. That that really means a lot. I, I had to earn that trust because uh, that that's not freely given. You gotta you gotta really put some stuff out. And so when he said that, it actually made me more nervous because I'm like, okay, now we really gotta come out because then he's gonna be like no no i, I gotta check i gotta check it next week i gotta check it next week so uh updating and cleaning business credit info framework let me give it to you guys so this is something that you can use for pretty much every major business credit bureau that we've been speaking about today and i'll put context around it experian equifax and then in brass street right so the way that this is going to work is you are going to shoot off an email with information that you are looking to update. Now, yes, can you go right into the Dun & Bradstreet database or get on a call with an account manager, get it updated, 100%. Can you wait for a account to report and have that information kind of flush through over into the system uh, with Experian and Equifax? 100%. But I always like to have a two and sometimes a three prong approach where if I don't have access to the account online, can I call in? If I can't call in, can I send an email? If I can't send an email, can I knock the door? Can I, if I can't knock the door, can I send the pigeon carrier over their way, right? So with this right here, this would be the exact framework that I would use if you're looking to update that information. So subject line would read, please update my company information for, and then include your business name. Like I'm giving it to you guys right here. I'm, I'm giving it to you right here. Email in the body. This is where you write. I know it says wrote, it's a typo. This is where you write a simple paragraph on what you're looking to change or update, which I'm going to give you the exact framework. I'm laying it out right now on the items that you want to include. Try to include as much information about your business as possible. As possible. This will show the validation that you are the actual business owner because no one knows more about your business than you do. Here you go. Wow. Business name, EIN, then number, your bin, your owner's uh, owner's name or owner name. Uh, you have your, and by the way, um, your your bin is, is gonna is gonna range. Like sometimes you'll get it over an experience, sometimes you'll get it over an Equifax right on the report. It'll say your your bin right on there, right? Um, don't confuse that with EIN. That that's different. Um, business address. And if you don't have it, not a killer, but it, it does help company email, business formation dates, business structure, meaning obviously, you know, who's on it. If you can include your articles of organization, articles of incorporation, like the whole shebang on there, include it, uh, your state. So where the business is established, any ICS code, any ICS subcode, if applicable, if applicable, if applicable, sometimes you'll also see that listed on the business credit reports. Um, number of employees, annual business revenue. Rad, I hope that they now see why keeping track of your information is so important and why data is a new oil, bro. Yeah, document everything, guys. So that way you can keep up because you're, you know, you're getting older. You're not getting younger. Um, so document everything. Screenshot every time you apply for something, put it in a folder <laughs> set personal applications, business applications. So that way when you reapply, you can make sure that these data points either, you know, even if things change, they change, but at least know what you're putting on these applications because as you can see, these companies are sharing your information without you knowing about it. And especially on the business side, they don't need your permission to do so. They're gonna literally just make a ton of money off of your data. And it's what you don't know that will hold you back from the high approval. So please, please, yes. please document everything that you're putting out there on behalf of your business and know your circle and know who's on these credit apps with you because their information can also directly and indirectly affect you. 100%. And so we got them on the side, Dunn Brad Street, Equifax, and Experian, LexisNexis, right? Now, creating your own trade lines and comparable credit. I have some, thought on, I have some thoughts on this, and I want Rad, because I know he has some data points that he, he probably wants to share on this, but I'll give you guys my thoughts. Having a bank loan is, and when I say bank loan, secured or unsecured, is one of the most powerful ways that you can build out your business credit profile because you build out that comparable credit. Comparable credit means if I have a $5,000 business credit card reporting on my business profile, other banks see that and they say, okay, if they're giving 5K, we can give somewhere in the range of three to seven, as an example. If they see, hey, 
there's five there there's a 10k business loan business on the credit on there cool they trust them with that let's shoot them an offer you meaning your business let's shoot them an offer to match that maybe a little bit above that at a better rate right the reason why this is important is because it's going to accelerate the time of when you can start getting some big boy and some big girl funding versus just having a bunch of credit cards and there's a time and a place for business credit cards I usually call them like the Swiss, like, like the army Swiss knife where you can kind of use it for everything. But there's certain things that you just, you, you're going to want to get business loan or business line of credit for. I like business lines of credit because they're like the workhorse of business capital and working capital. I can start extracting money out of there. And I'm going to say this with love. I'm not the biggest MS guy. Rarely have I ever taught a manufacturer spending. Is there a time and a place for manufacturer spending? Yes. But in my opinion, and again, I'm not looking to put anyone down on this. In my opinion, sometimes you get to a point where you just don't want to manufacture spend. If I'm just being brutally honest with you, you get to the point well, where you're too just, busy. I'm too busy for it. I have no time to even go to the bro, store. You get to the point <laughs> where you're managing staff, you're managing product, you're watching fulfillment, you're watching social media, or you're, you're creating content for social media. Um, you're, you're out here piecing content together. You're out there serving your network. There's just not enough times in the time of the day where I would want to get, go out and manufacture spend. Can you do that at one point or another, especially if you have more time, 100%, I'm not going to tell you how to run your life or your business, but eventually, and again, I say this humbly, we want to graduate from that. We want to get access to a business line of credit where we can then use the funds from the business line of credit without having to do the hustle and bustle where the, where the money's in our account. We don't have to wait, you know, for a refund. We don't have to wait for the cycle to hit. It's just there. And then I can start pumping it back into a project. And for those of us that say, yeah, but there's interest on it. Dude, rad, Rad's 65K, I think, at a prime rate of three of 3.2 in this market. Like, mm -hmm. let that sit for a second in this market, right? And so now he has that available in his account as good as cash. So if you wanted to pump into a real estate deal, if you wanted to pump back into marketing, if you wanted to pump back into actual staff that he can physically pay out payroll cash because you can't always use your credit card to cover payroll. Like some apps don't, some apps don't allow you to do it. Like Gusto doesn't let you do it. If you're doing payroll, you need physical cash or actual account that's connected. You can do 